Okay, so we're going to start our cartoon jumble exercise inspired by the works of Arturo Herrera here. And a place we can start always when we start a new project is looking for inspiration. So if you just go to Google in Chrome, we're going to do an image search. Your parameters for your first exercise are you need to find at least five line art references that have a similar character of line. So let me think. What do I want to do? Let's do Conan. Kind of early 20th century comics. So if I look for, whoops, if I look for Conan the Barbarian, under an image search, first I need to learn how to optimize this search. Because we want at least five line art references. But we also need them to be high enough resolution that they'll print at a good size for us without looking too pixelated. Right? So when you're in a Google image search, what I want you to then do is go to tools. Almost always <laughs> to make the search tool better for you. The first thing you're going to do is size. What size do you want these to be? And we're going to go to larger than 4 megapixels. And you can see, larger than 4 megapixels, it actually defines that in terms of pixels. That means that the image is at least 2,272 pixels by 1,704 pixels. Okay, but then I see a lot of photographs. And I don't want photographs. I want line art. Right? I might have some of it, but I don't want to have to search through all of the line art or all the photographs to get to it. So now I can go to, to color, and I can go to black and white. <coughs> right. Next, I can go to type, and I can say line drawing. And this helps considerably. Now, Google relies on user image tags, right? So you're going to get some weird stuff. Like, why is something from Overwatch showing up under a Conan search? I have no idea. So how do we go through these images and choose the ones we want? Well, first I want to kind of find the line quality I like. So I like this kind of line quality. It's very Frank Frazetta-like. So what I do is I left-click on the image to get this screen, right? And then you right click on the title of the image to open it in a new tab. So once you've looked more closely at it, you can see its source file here in a new tab. Or you can just, in a new tab, click on view image, and that will go even more directly to it. So you can actually look at it in full resolution. And if they're four megapixels or bigger, they should be about four times the size of your screen. We have to scroll around to see them. And if that's the case, then it's a good usable image. You can drag and drop it onto your desktop, or right click and say Save Image As, and then always navigate it to the desktop. And the shortcut for that, let's say it's going to go somewhere else, the shortcut is Command D when you're on the Save screen, and that will always navigate it to the desktop. We always want to save to the desktop so we can see where the work is, so that we can use it later. All right, so why do I do the right click thing? It's so I can go back to this search easily and find multiples. Now what I'm looking for are images that are large enough that are also kind of free floating. Not necessarily cropped or contained by a rectangle because that will make them easier to play with. and I don't have to erase the rectangle there. And if you're not getting enough options with your searches, remember we're just looking for similar line quality, then you can broaden your search terms a little bit. So I could just search for barbarians if I wanted.
So left click so you can see it, because sometimes it's just a terrible image and you see it a little bit bigger and you don't want to waste your time. But if you think it has potential, right click on view image and open it in a new tab. Right? And then you'll be able to see it full resolution. And if it looks good, save it. But you always want to check them. Ah, uh, good old Jack Kirby. Yeah, that's still pretty decent. So this is a scan of inks, and you can see that it's very rasterized. You've got that, that edge, but that's okay. That's how most ink work is going to look when you look up close. When you don't want to use it is when it looks really blurry or looks really um, digitized, you know, noisy. That means something was done wrong with it. Some cool Kirby fan art. And I always get kind of distracted and pulled into new inspirations when I'm doing Google image searches. And that's okay. Like this little tattoo design. And do they all have to be the same uh, file format? No, they're going to be different file formats. And is a GIF okay? A GIF can be okay, yeah. So that's a, a good question. So you can see I have JPEGs mostly which is the most common online, but I'll have PNGs. And yeah, if they're older files, they might be GIFs. And I'll show you how to work with that. But there, those are all uh, image formats we can use for this project. Okay, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I probably, that tattoo one, not gonna use. All right, so how do we organize our files? Instead of shutting this down, because I might have to go back to this search, I'm going to minimize it. So I'm going to use this little yellow minus that shrinks it into my dock. <coughs> and instead of having these five files just hanging out, making a mess on my desktop, I'm going to make a folder. So you right click, you make a folder, and we're going to call this exercise one. Cartoon Jumble. All right, easy enough. Then we drag across all the, the reference images and we put them into that folder. We're going to try to keep our desktop as clean as possible. Now from last class we have all this stuff that we were playing with. And by the end of this week we will have an organized folder for you where everything goes that uses your image as its icon, right? And that will help us understand the difference between PNG and JPEG files. But for right now, I just need you to have this. Once you have that, I want you to pick your favorite one. And I'm gonna help you with file organization a little bit. In Max, it's really helpful when you see your screen like this in a folder, you can click on this little gear wheel and say, show view options. And you can make your icons a lot bigger. And you can collapse the space between them. And you can even arrange them by name so that they all fit. All right? I'm going to shrink them just so I can see all five. But see them pretty large, see them pretty clearly. I'm going to say, okay, what's the one I like the most that I want to build on top of? I'm going to say, I like this one the most. I'm going to build on top of that. So with that one, we are going to right click and open it with Photoshop. Another way to do that is to click it and drag and drop it on top of your, your Photoshop icon. That will open up that file format in Photoshop. <coughs> and it will be Photoshop Creative Cloud 2018. And it might be the first time this Photoshop is being opened. So it might take a little, little time, but it, the opening screen looks like that. And we're going to be learning these skills, compositing together. This composites together paint strokes and a photograph and other textures. 
We're just going to composite together with line art. Okay, I'm going to show you how to get started. But the first thing to make sure is that your reference is big enough and good enough quality. So right after this demo, in about four more minutes, I'll come around, help you guys with any questions you have about saving the work, finding the work you want. And sometimes a website just won't let you take a good image from it. So you move on. Okay, but now let's get used to Photoshop and what it's telling us. This goes to the complexity of it. It will tell you what the image format is. So this is a JPEG tells me right in the title at the top. That's a little postscript with the, the period. It shows me at the bottom how much memory it takes. So right now this is taking up 28 megabytes of memory within Photoshop. By the end it's going to take up a lot more because we're going to layer more images. I have rulers turned on. So if you don't see rulers around your image, hit Command R to turn your rulers on and off. We want the rulers turned on because that shows us our physical dimension. And our physical dimension needs to be what we want it to print at. Right? So mine, this image that I just opened up, it's a little bit more than 8 inches by 10 inches. Now I'm going to go to image size to actually see what the resolution is. So you go to image up at the top, scroll down to image size. This is a very important window here. And it shows me that this image is 8 by 10 inches at 600 pixels per inch. What I'm going to do is uncheck resample so that I'm keeping the original pixel dimensions and I'm going to make it the print size I want, which is going to be 9 inches by 12 inches. All right. And it's, it's okay if it's more than that, but I don't want any of your files to be smaller than 9 by 12. And the resolution needs to be at least 350. But because I hit re I unchecked resample, it's saying if I want this image to be closer to 9 by 12, it's only going to be 500 pixels per inch. And that's great. That's still above 350. So I say OK. Finally, it's the 105 that you can pick. Yeah, so we'll look. You might not have a, a big enough image there. <coughs> And that's where the, the searching under larger than 4 megapixels yeah. is going to help. Okay, now that I have that set up, I might even give myself some more space by going to image canvas size because my image is a little cramped. And so I'm going to make my canvas size even bigger. Let's make it 11 inches wide by 14 inches tall with an extension color of white. That just grew my paper, right? Now I'm ready to start bringing in new images. And if you are ready to do that, if you have the right resolution, the right size, again, you can always check under image size. It's at least 9 by 12, and it's at least 350 pixels per inch. Your memory should be well over 20 or 30 megabytes then at the bottom. Then you're ready to start bringing in your other images. And you just drag and drop them in. They're going to come in as what are called smart objects, which gives you a transform box around them. You hold down shift so they don't distort. You can hold down option as well so that they, they grow from the center and you can grow them. But try to keep all of them on the page and then hit return. And then you'll see they're a smart object, but we can change their blending mode to what's called multiply under the layer window. I know this is a lot, but we're going to learn through repetitions. <laughs> By changing their blending mode, it will treat this black and white layer, which is opaque, as a transparency. And it will let the line work come through from underneath. I'm not going to worry about transforming or <laughs> subtracting from them yet. I'm just going to worry about layering them all up. Using the transform box to scale them to fit hitting return to place them, then changing their blending mode to multiply. Using the transform box, holding down shift and option to scale it to fit. I could also rotate it at this point if I wanted to.